Jack, and I bet you're wondering where I get my toys. I get my toys from BigBadToyStore.com. Get your big and bad toy needs all at BigBadToyStore.com. Link is in the description down below. Hey guys, this is the Jack with the video review of Transformers Generations Thrilling 30 Voyager Class Rhinox. Got this in the mail from Hasbro Toy Shop, and he is a great figure. Now, there are some problems that we're getting into. Um, one of them being his knees and waist uh, joints, but we'll look at that. But that's basically um, the only problems I really have with them. Um, still a great figure. So, but first up, let's take a look at the packaging. So, typical Thrilling 30 Voyager box. Got the beautiful, nice looking artwork on the side of Rhinox. So, got the Maximal logo right there. Comes with twin spinning Gatling guns. Throwing 30, there's a Maxwell logo again. Coming to one side, Rhinox, Maxwell, you Series 2, number 5. Coming to the bottom, you got Double Dealer, which I'm kind of iffy on. So, but uh, yeah. Coming to the back, here is his bio. If you want to read that, um, there he is in a robot mode. Now he does come with. The Gatling guns, but in the product picture, they're painted silver. Despite the actual thing that you're getting is the color of his skin. So, so, and you got weapon storage in his belly. So, and here are his tech specs. So, but uh, yeah, overall, nice packaging. But let's get it out of the way. So, but uh, here we have Rhinox in his Rhino mode. It actually looks kind of good. Um, I could see some robot bits. For some reason, it's like his hind feet go lower than his front feet. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be like that or I did something wrong. I follow the instructions as best that I as best as I could. But yeah, so and of course you can see his feet robot mode feet. You got rubber. Rubber rear end, so he can, I'm going to quote Pia on this, he could take a little Lego guy and recreate the scene from, I think it was him who said it, but recreate the scene from uh, Ace Ventura when nature calls. So, but, uh, yeah. So that's this piece coming up to here, soft rubber. Uh, his ears and his horns. Small one, I'm not sure, but the big one is. Soft rubber, so... But you can see the detail. You've got black eyes. I know you can't see it, but maybe you can right there. So, you can see more. This is where his weapon storage is, so he doesn't have a hollow belly. Um, but yeah, overall, really nice detail. I do like this. If the tail were to move independently, that would have been kind of cool, but the only thing it could do is this. So, but, uh, <clears throat> so. Overall, very nice. Forgot to grab a comparison figure, so I'll be right back. And since we're looking at a Beast Wars figure, why not we get the other reformatted Beast Wars? There he is with Wasp and Ender. Um, of course, Wasps are extremely, extremely tiny compared to Rhinos. But this is Hasbro we're talking about. So, but, uh, yeah. So there is Wasp and Ender and Rhinox next to each other. I hope they make more Beast Wars, like, reformatted figures. I mean, I know we're getting Rat Trap, but I could see, like, a new Cheetor, like, better than the Universe one, or new Optimal Optimus, or maybe a new Megatron. That'd be cool. So, but, uh, yeah, this is all I got. So, Maximal and a Predacon. So, but, uh, yeah. So, but, uh, overall... Not much else, so let's get on to the transformation of Rhinox. Okay, transformation of Rhinox. What you want to do, come to the bottom. You want to split open the belly. And you want to be careful. Actually, I didn't want to do that. But you want to come under here. And, uh, you want to kind of ungrab it because there's a tab right on this whole back piece. That will allow you to unlock it. That should come out easily. There we go. 
So it brings like that, and, and you can see the weapons are trying to come loose. So, but, uh, bring that back again. Come on. So, hey, okay, get that open. And you wiggle out the guns as best as you can. So, and the green I noticed, uh, I thought it was just going to be like a flat green. But once I open this up, it's actually a nice shiny. Uh, you think it's metallic, like a flaky, but it's not. But it's, like the appearance makes it look flaky. So, but uh, here's the guns. Of course, like always, drop one of them. Um, so yeah. On mine, one of them does spin a little longer than the other one. I think it's the one in my right hand, maybe? Yeah. Uh, no, I guess left hand. As you can see, one goes longer than the other. Um, so, um, I think it might be something in the gun. Because everybody does that. I noticed on Piaz, Shockwave 514s. Um, can't remember who else I watched. I think Opterotomus said it was two, so, but, uh, yeah, overall nice guns, would have liked if these were silver, um, I might go in there and get some silver paint on the edge, so, but overall, really nice gun, I do like these, so, but, uh, continuing on, what you want to do, you want to come back here to the butt flap, and this is one of the, it's like, on this piece, it's kind of warping to the like this and I don't want it to do that. Um, somebody could help me. I'm thinking you can use the hair dryer at a safe distance, so it, like so it won't get too hot. Um, Cause that's what I'm thinking about doing with, like doing with uh, GDO Megatron swords. But if somebody can help me with that, that'd be greatly appreciated. So, but uh, bring that back like that. Come down here to the toes. Like that, and yes, I'm just following the directions. Um, like that. You want to bring these um, back pieces down. I'm gonna bring it over and off, like down, so that green piece goes into his thigh, like that. And it will kind of flap over, and it should peg in, I believe. Uh, come down. Should peg in like that. And these are the front of the legs. Um, now people are saying that the knees uh, are kind of loose. It doesn't look like that on mine, but uh, it could be the angle of the knee. I think there's. I thought they were saying something about like the hips or something. Uh, but uh, anyways, I uh, want to bring this down because there's little nubs in the waist section you can see oh, right there so yeah you can see the little nubs bring it down enough to spin it back and when you spin it you want to make sure that you put it back one click because that's actually what I do it to so it's like that so uh, I think the instructions Say to bring it back all the way up like that. I just like to leave it down to like that, but I might try. Yeah, because that will bring out the piece like that. So, but you can leave it like that if you want. Uh, it's what the instructions say, but I like to leave it down like this so you can see the tan piece. So, but you want to come to the front of the hippo. Yes, I'm focusing. There you go. So, then you bring him down like this. You want to rotate him up enough to where the gray piece is in there. We'll bring him down like this. Rotate the arms out. You want to unpeg. Oh, by the way, if you have it in rhino mode, you can't open his jaw. Could have said that, but uh, no, I didn't. But, uh, of course, you open his jaw, you have his head sticking out. And you can bring this back like that. 
Now, one thing I kind of have a gripe about the head, which I found sad when I opened them, uh, if I can... I have no idea what happened to that. Um, I don't want to email them about it because they'll be like, oh, send it back in. We can't send you a whole nother, just a head. Despite they sent me the smokestacks for uh, Ultra Magnus, but they can't send me a single head. So, but, um, but yeah, bring it down. This kind of has a nub system, like where the, that gray piece is holding onto this. That kind of has a nub system. You just bring it down like that. I want to bring down the crotch cover like that. Then bring down the signature lower jaw chest piece. Then on the side of the chest, there's these two hinges. Uh, the one where you can see the pin. You don't want to fold that in because that would kind of bring it too far out. So the inner one, the shoulder one, you want to. Rotate there, rotate there, but you kind of have these, kind of like uh, Fall of Cybertron kickback, if you know his chest piece, uh, then you rotate these however you like, I like to do it snug against the jaw, so it's like that. So, but uh, bring this down, want to, you know the arms are kind of strong in there. They tap really good. And you can hear my voice draining. That means I'm actually having a tough time. Uh, I'm going to go off camera for a second. There we go. That's actually like the tough part about this. So then rotate that. And again, go like that. Rotate the hand many degrees. Come in. Go in. Try to get the hand as best as you can. There you go. So then close that back up. Open that up. Get the fist out. There's Rhinox. Now his chest will come out if you randomly get your finger there. He is nice. Um, now, I didn't really stand him yet. I just kind of held him in my hands while I was playing with him after I got him out of the box. But uh, people are saying that he has like super loose knees. Um, I now notice that that is a pin joint. Um, I am not sure. Uh, I mean, we could try it. Let's just hope he stands. And of course, his nubs. Nubby heels are not really. So his center of gravity, gravity is kind of off due to the backpack, of course. Um, so, I mean, we could try the little guns, like kind of bringing the weight forward. So that's what it might just be. It might be that little tad of weight that you distribute to one side and it works. And you guys think I talk crap. <laughs> I, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said about the waist, um, they kind of designed that kind of weird. Um, I can, of course, bring it down. But he's kind of stubby looking. I mean, it might not look on the camera, but on, like, in person, it is. So I like to kind of go halfway. Um, I mean, that looks kind of weird. But, I mean, hey, he does look good. Um, looks a whole lot better than the original Beast Wars figure, and I guess that one was kind of crappy. This one is a whole lot of show accuracy. Um, now, I th this generation stuff is mostly based off the comics. I don't think they did this off the comics, despite they, of course, he was in a couple of comics. I think they really did them to get a reboot, reboot from the show toy. 
Um, yeah. Um, cause that, the other one was like, I think the shortest of the toy group is only about like this tall or something. Not much people really liked them. So, I mean, this thing just makes up for that little tiny hunk of plastic. So, but, uh, yeah. And if you find a good center of gravity for them, uh, let's just get them. Yeah, let's get them with a waspinator. So, of course, waspinator does not want to stand. But, like I was going to say, um, this so guy's a whole lot perfect. If I were to have more Beast Wars figures, then yeah, I would show like Cheetor, Optima Optimus, um, basically Dinobot, well, Beast Hunter's Ratchet, that doesn't really count. But anyways, yeah. Good scale, I do like this. Um, I might go in there and fix that waist um, between the next snippet and now. The knees, I have no clue what to do. I could unpin it if I could. Put a little dash of nail polish on there or something. And try to do that. So, But uh, yeah, there he is with Waspinator. Um, so, but yeah. So there is Rhinox. So articulation for Rhinox is actually pretty cool. I did kind of mess with his joints to see what he's got. He's got a ball jointed head. So I can kind of go, huh? Yes, sir. You know, flexing, basically. And he's just giving you that dirty look. Like, I'm about to beat you into a pulp. And you got the universal joint for the shoulder. Um, yeah, I thought it would be universal, like, going in and out like that. It doesn't, though. Um, so, but, uh, you got... Swivel up the elbow, you got knee, or knee, arm, well, duh, it's arm, I meant to say elbow, but, uh, yeah, and you got a tiny bit of wrist, but that's mostly for transformation, um, you got waist, yeah, uh, universal hip joint, you can rotate there, you got in and out like that. Of course, you got the knee, and you got hip pivot or hip pivot, uh, ankle pivot, which is nice. Um, now I kind of did actually get him to stand good. I actually kind of had a chicken leg him. Um, that's this is the after effect that I kind of changed. So, but you try to find a good. Oh, see now this is good. See now, that's a good joint, or pose. So it's like you just have to find it a good center of gravity or point of gravity or whatever. Then once you find it, try to set it the best you can in order. Because for me, I display Voyagers in their robot modes next to each other. So, but um, uh, yeah. So overall, a really nice figure. I like the green. The rhino skin is good. The teeth are painted. You got the gold. Even you got the chest piece acting like his tongue. Just really good paint apps. Uh, despite the problems I have with them, uh, still pretty good. Um, so, but uh, overall, pretty good figure. If these would have been painted, yeah, so that would have been fine. I'm thinking about getting the Takara figure. People are saying that he has more show accurate color scheme for some reason like this one actually does I think the only difference is the it's a darker green darker rhino skin and the guns are finally painted I'm debating on that um so I'll just have to wait until I get the money to get that I might get that at TFCon this October so but uh, yeah so there is Generations Rhinox so this has been the review of Transformers Generations Thrilling 30 Voyager Class Rhinox. He is a great update to the old classic uh, Beast Wars figure. That was kind of stoopy and just downright not good. But um, he does have his problems like the knees and the waist. Of course the guns, but those can easily be uh, 
painted. So, but overall, great figure. If you can find one, uh, try to get it. Um, so, but uh, overall, pretty good figure. So, again, guys, this has been the Jackal, and of course, throwing 30 Rhinox. Uh, please comment or subscribe to tune for more reviews, hauls, vlogs, unboxings, all that good stuff. You can go follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Jackal2484. Um, so, yeah, you can get this guy and many other big and bad toy needs all at bigbadtoystore.com. You can even get this guy on HasbroToyShot.com. That's where I got this one. So, so again, guys, this has been the Jackal, and I'll catch you guys later.